Gosh. I had no idea. I'm you talk, you're still little. <laughs> what? I said if you don't talk, you're little. Okay. Hey, everybody. It's Jules, and we are in number three of the discovery series and we're so excited to have you here um hopefully you've been here for number one and number two and if you missed it for any reason you need to go back and catch it because in number one we talked about all of the profile and getting the correct answers to the questions because it's important your data in is what your results are and so you want to make sure that you put in the right stuff so that you can get the right results in your ph 360 and um, it was awesome and then number two was all about food with Daniela Remy and we had so much fun and got so many questions answered and learned so many things and even got a little download of some things that were to come so that's really great uh, and now we are to level three um, and number three is gonna be really special because we are gonna get a little tip into the science behind PH360 and we have our VP of coaching Diana Anderson here and she is going to be taking us through um, the science behind PH360 so welcome Diana thank you Jules hi everybody it's great to be here I'm really excited to share some really fun with you today I think you'll really enjoy the things that I'm going to share with you today so, so thanks Diana, for having me on the yeah, I just wanted to share a little bit about you. Um, Diana is our VP of coaching. She is one of our instructors. Uh, she teaches, in fact, she's teaching in uh, colleges now, the PH360 protocol. So it's really cool. Um, and so I just wanted to say, Diana, can you just like give people a little hint of you and, and kind of how did you come to PH360? People are always wondering about things like that. Well, I was just lucky. <laughs> That's part of it. Because I knew Jules, and she introduced me to P360, and I got to be a beta tester, which was an awesome thing for me because I was, um, I probably wouldn't have participated in this in this strong of a way as I did, except I got to be a beta tester, or I got to learn so much and test the program and see the, what the results were and share my results on camera. And I ended up changing my health in such a gigantic way in a very short period of time. So I was sold on the program immediately. It was very fun being a beta tester. And then uh, over time with everything that I got to do and got involved in, with, I got to uh, start to work for the company with Jules and Matt and Bex and it's been, been really fun. So, and my health has been improving the whole entire time. Yeah, that's great. I don't know if you guys know this or not, but uh, whenever Matt's talking about the person who could not eat the kale smoothies and was at the high altitude and needed to come down, that's Diana. <laughs> that's right. Yes. <laughs> I, I had to change a lot of things. <laughs> I, was doing, I thought I was doing everything very healthy, but not for my specific body. Those things work for other people's body. Oh, wow. That's a great example of of the why PH360 is so important. So, hey, Diana, so um, what did you, like, what are you thinking about today? Well, how are you gonna, do you wanna start with uh, your slideshow or do you want to, are you gonna start with the teaching or do you wanna answer, like, talk about anything first? Well, I think what, what I'd like to do is go over the science behind PH360 and how that makes, per, you know, your health personalized and then at the very end take questions about it because I'm sure there's so much information I'm going to share. I'm sure people are going to have questions at the end. So I just want to start with the slides and just teaching you guys what personal health is and how these sciences apply to every single person. Okay, that sounds great. All right. So, uh, so do, is it ready to go or yeah. do you need a couple minutes? Um, it's, I'm just going to share my screen. And what I'll do is, um, it'll just take me a minute to share my screen. And then as soon as that's ready, we'll start. So we can talk until it's, it's done. Okay, great. In the meantime, let's talk about coaching for a minute because that's your realm. And in fact, Pam has been on the last couple calls and people were noticing how awesome she was. And I said, she's a PH360 coach. Um, but 
kind of wondering, you know, what is the, what do people have to do to become a coach? Maybe you could share a little bit about that since people don't oh, sure. know about that. Yeah, well, um, to become a coach, you just have to, you know, sh go to one of our coaching courses. That's that we have we have two levels. I mean, Jules, you can probably explain this as well. But we have the personal foundation co course, and that's step one. And then we have the coaching course, and that's step two. And once you've attended both of those, then and and learned everything about biotypes and how to help other people and how this all applies to your body and how it applies to other people's body. Then you start practicing with other coaches. You coach friends and family. We give you some free people to coach. And you practice on a few people. And then we certify you. And you become a coach on our PH360 website where we take your bio and a little video of you and let other people who need a coach um, choose you. And then you can start to guide people to better health. Wow, that's great, honey. And you've done such a great job with our coaches, um, getting them trained up. I mean, it's so professional the way you're doing it. So it's really awesome. Thank you so much. Well, we're trying. <laughs> yeah. So um, let's go ahead when you're ready. Yeah, can you see it okay? I can, yeah. Okay, great. So then we will, um, I'll hide that. So we'll get started. So personalized health, a PH360 stands for personalized health on this 360 degree wheel. And what we're doing is making each part of the program personalized to you. And that's what I'm going to share with you today is how this becomes personalized. So you have your DNA, your genes, and what has made up you, plus your environment, your lifestyle, you know, the the pollutants around you, the people around you, everything that you interact with in your body, and your genes plus your environment and lifestyle equal who you are today. And that changes throughout your life, and it, it can vary from one environment to another environment. Who you are is a constantly changing thing. Does that make sense to you, Jules? Yeah, totally. So these are all the sciences that are behind PH360. It's quite a bit. So I'm going to talk about a lot of these. Embryology, we'll talk about anthropometry, endocrinology. We're going to talk about phenotypology, a little bit about semiotics. Ancestry and genetic lineage will be um, touched on. But we're going to, and I won't really talk about molecular biology today, but that's also behind the program. Neuropsychology and epigenetics. And... We'll talk about chronobiology, geomedicine, and ex exposomics. So not some, I, I, I know how to say that word, but <laughs> exposomics. <laughs> we'll talk about that, which is exposure to your environment. Ayurveda, traditional Chinese medicine, and nutrigenomics. All these different sciences, we're going to explain how they're applied in the program. So right now, in traditional medicine, Everyone's kind of treated the same. Like with the same, you have this symptom, you know, here's where the doctor's going to give you. Or if you have um, a baby, here's how, here's our protocol. Everything is the same, but we're not all the same. What PH360 is going to do is notice that everybody is an individual and we all have things that are very unique to us. So we notice all those differences. And that's really important because just think about all the different people in the world. And if you try to treat everybody the same, you know, if somebody grew up in another country, maybe they have a completely different ancestry or maybe they're different age, different gender. They might have different biotypes, which means they digest things differently. They're, they might have a different sensitive sensitivity in their nervous system. We should not all be treated the same. We, it's very, very, very individualized how our body reacts to our environment, to temperature, to different foods. Just like me, I can't eat raw greens very much. Now that, you know, you'd think everyone should have lots of raw greens, but it's not true. We're all very, very unique. So we are going to apply these sciences uniquely to each one of us. So we start out being unique in the womb. 
right? As a little tiny baby. And this chart's hard to see. I don't know. Jules, can you kind of see that on the, the yellow part it says endoderm, in the middle it says mesoderm, on the right it says ectoderm. Can you see that okay? Not too much, but it was great that you just said it. <laughs> okay, good, good. And, and I'll, this will be going over in more detail too, but, you know, starting in the womb, we have these three different types of uh, layers of tissue. And if you could see this very well, on the right, in the blue, where it says ectoderm, it says ectoderm is responsible for the brain and the nervous system. It's also responsible for the skin, the hair, and the nails. That's your ectoderm. Right, and so endoderm, which is in yellow, is responsible for the inner lining of the respiratory tract, a lot of your glands, your inner lining of your digestive tract. So it has a lot to do with the gut and some of those organs that break down digestion. Where the mesoderm has to do with bones and cartilage and um, some of the inner skin layers. It has to do with muscle and our... Um, connective tissues. So those are the different layers that we're developing when we're a baby or we're, we're, when we're an embryo. And during the different embryonic stages of life, um, you can see that different layers develop. And that kind of makes a, that makes a big difference in how our body grows and deals with life. So uh, on the top part of this page is just different stages of an embryo. And below that are different adults, women and men, that, are the, that have more or less of the different dermal layers. So if we look at the ladies on, and let me move this little chart here so you guys can, ah, sorry about that. That didn't work out. <laughs> so sorry. So. I don't know if I can move this little chart so you can see this lady who's um, on the far left. She is an, an ectoderm. So she has a um, highly sensitive nervous system and her brain, um, hair, nails, those things are developed through the ecto layer. So she's more ecto. And the lady in the middle is more meso. So she's going to have more good strong bones and a little more muscle. Um, definition and then the gal on the right side she is an endoderm so she's going to have strong digestive tract and um, she's going to have an equal amount of bone muscle and layers of fat they're going to be more equal so in the men the same thing you've got the thin man um, it says ecto ectomorph and the middle guy endomorph and the um, one on the right, the mesomorph, those show the different body types developed because of these different layers that are developed in the womb. If you have a male who's an ectomorph, he's going to be leaner and thinner, and it's going to be harder for him to gain muscle and fat. He's going to have to work a lot harder. He's always just, his body's naturally going to be more thin. An endomorph male or female is going to have an easy time gaining weight and gaining muscle because they have a lot of that tissue. They have very strong bones. They're going to make very good uh, football players, you know, if they're male, because they have so much strength. And the mesomorphs, they're going to be more defined in their muscles and be a little more in the middle as far as um, bone and fat ratios. They're more balanced in the middle. So do you have any questions about that? Is that making sense, Jules? Yeah, it really makes sense. Um, these are the type of things that people learn in the in the personal foundation experience and the discovery course. I mean, and the I'm sorry, this is the discovery course and the coaches course. So what we're learning today is like a mini version of those yeah. courses. Right, right, exactly. Instead of going through four days of, of this, we're just going to go over it in, a, in an hour. So it's a really crash course. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you're doing great, Diana. <laughs> Keep it up. People are loving it. Okay, so now you can see in a, with more detail the ectomorph, the mesomorph, and the endomorph body types. And you can see that the ectomorphs, like, they're going to be thinner, have small shoulders, and um, uh, narrower legs, you know, on the ectomorph. And on the other end, the endomorphs are the opposite. They have uh, the broadest shoulders and the broadest hips.
and they'll have the bigger thighs because they have so much muscle, bone, and fat tissue combined. They just have a lot of everything. They have a bigger body mass, and so we will talk about tomorrow how they need to have lots of circulation because they have so much mass, they need to get that blood and oxygen through their mass. And the, um, the mesomorphs tend to be shorter, and this picture kind of depicts that a little bit. They tend to be the shorter ones with smaller hands and smaller feet, and uh, uh, they tend to be good in certain sports that take a lot of dynamic, like short, fast movements. Okay. Oops. I keep doing that. And the same with the men, we'll just, just touch on this real quick. The endomorph male is going to have lots of bone, muscle, and fat, and they can gain muscle very easily um, if they work on it. And same with the mesomorph. They all, all of these types will gain muscle if they work on it, but the ectomorph is always going to gain very lean, straight muscles. They won't get as much bulk. They can bulk up, but it won't ever be as bulky as these other guys. Their shoulders will be more narrow and they'll just be leaner in general. So we, we know this from embryology about the different layers. But back when in the time of da Vinci, people became very fascinated, starting with da Vinci's ratio of the man, became very um, interested in the different shapes of bodies and what that meant. And so they started developing all of these ratios, and it over a couple hundred years, it developed into a science that we call anthropometry or anthropometrics. And so there are several different scientists who really made an effort in this uh, study of anthropometry. And what they did over hundreds of years, these guys spent, um, you know, each of them dedicating their life to studying the the ratios of bodies and over hundreds of years they came up with a science known as anthropometry and this measures all these different ratios in the body and these ratios tell us so much about the biotype of the body so what we do is we look at a person's body and we're looking at their head their neck their shoulders their waist their their thighs and knees and ankles and feet and then we can decide oh from those ratios if they have this size head then and they have this size jaw and hand, then that puts them into this category of a biotype. And we learn all this from knowing, you know, so many times over they've measured and measured and measured the body to, to learn what these ratios are. So, for example, one of those scientists had studied for um, decades, he studied cadavers in a university with students, and they measured actually around I think they estimated around a hundred thousand cadavers uh, so they could determine some of these ratios and know which biotypes they were and then they were able to document the causes of death and the related diseases that related commonly to certain ratios so it was a lot of information we were able to gather from just that one guy uh, our body has these amazing formulas that are like the golden mean and the golden rule, you know, that we have, we're very proportionate. So it's really easy for pH 360 to, when you get the measurements correct, you know, when you're measuring your head and your wrist and your hand, if you get the measurements correct, the program can accurately determine your biotype because of the right ratios. So it's really important to do the measurements right. I'm sure you've taught everybody that, Jules. If you get we the did in module one. <laughs> right, because if we get the measurements wrong, then, you know, it can, it can throw things off a little bit. And so one of the things we know is once we know the measurements, we know a lot about your digestion because each biotype digests food differently. And then there's combinations of biotypes you know like you could be, be in between two and they're going to have different digestions so that tells us what kind of food you can eat and what kind of diet would be best for you then we also know from the biotypes a little bit about your dominant hormones 
Endocrinology is a study of your hormones. Now your body releases hundreds of hormones, literally. So you have hundreds of hormones working through your body all the time, these chemicals that are just triggering things. But we're gonna talk about some of the main ones. And you know, depending on your shape of your body, the shape of your body tells us about your hormones. So somebody with um, like a male that might have a lot of muscle structure, we might know he's gonna have a lot of testosterone. A male with a very lean body, we might know, okay, he's going to have a lot of dopamine. So we know some of those things just by looking at the bodies. And what the hormones do is they affect so many things. They affect how you digest your food, what stimulates your brain and makes you happy so that we know what can influence your mood. We know from your hormones what jobs you would be good at. There's just so many things that are determined by all of these different glands that release these different chemicals. And these, you know, people have heard, a lot of people have talked about um, the body shapes, the, let's see, they call it the body type diet, and it's four different body types, the thyroid, the adrenal type, etc. Well, those are similar. They're not the same as pH 360, but we we have a similar thing in that we know from your body shape a lot about what hormones are being released and are dominant in your body, and maybe which ones are out of balance. So some of the main ones that we talk about are dopamine, prolactin, oxytocin, serotonin, adrenaline, testosterone. Those are just some of the main ones, even though there's so many more. I mean, I'm not a scientist or a doctor, so I don't know the hundreds and hundreds of chemicals that are being released every day. But we do know how some of these affect the body and the body shape. So the, first of all, hormones affect our behavior. Too much of one hormone can make somebody aggressive or timid. You know, I love this picture of Bush doing this. You know, these are just, you know, hormones affect how, how confident we are, how strong we are, and how we interact with other people. So we know that what happens is those hormones will help determine what jobs you're good at if you're going to be somebody who can be detached from a crime scene and be a police officer or if you can be compassionate and be a nurse because you got lots of oxytocin, or if you have enough testosterone to do something like be a construction worker and do a lot of physical labor all day, or you have a lot of dopamine and you can be an accountant. Like, you know, these jobs over here, this guy might, can you guys see my mouse moving? Yes. Okay, so this guy here might have a lot of dopamine. And so he's going to be a good thinker, you know, just work all day, think, 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 use his brain all day long and never tire of that. It's Where the, this guy, guy, the guy on the right. <laughs> yes, the guy on the right with a green tie. Yeah. <laughs> and probably the guy with the red tie. These guys might, you know, because they, they have the long face. This is more of a an ectomorph shape. And they're going to, you know, be the people who need to think all day or, and love it. And they don't get bored of that. And this guy right here that has, you know, the dark skin and a blue hat, if he was had to wear a tie and work in the office all day, he'd want to jump out the window, you know, of the of a 30 story building. He's not going to have fun doing that. He needs to move his body all day long and um, be physical, not be thinking and sitting at a desk all day. And so it's, it, you know, we can know by um, your hormones those kind of things about you. And so, you know, basically the other thing that happens is if you're dominant in one part of one hormone, it's going to affect which areas of which areas of the brain you're strongest in. So like somebody who has a lot of dopamine, they have a lot of their forebrain or the frontal cortex of their brain is used and that allows them to do a lot of analytical thinking and things like that. So and if you have a lot of oxytocin, that affects other areas of your brain that make you want to connect with people and make you compassionate. So hormones affect a lot. Okay, so I'm going to skip ahead from hormones, endocrinology, into another area of pH 360. Sorry, this slide did not turn out well. This is 
um, supposed to represent chronobiology. And I guess for right now, just look at the wheel and the, the person on the wheel. What, what this is trying to depict, and maybe I'll just go to another slide, is that you know, d throughout the day, th this, this wheel represents kind of a clock throughout the day. When the sun comes up, that's affecting our body in one way. When the sun's at mid-noon, it's affecting our body in other ways. The sun goes down, it's in having an impact on the hormones in our body and how our body's mood and brain are, are being affected. So like when it's sunny out and you know we're just waking up, there's, there's a feeling in our body. Chronobiology is the science of how our body interacts with the rhythms of the planet. So the planet has these cycles all the time, these annual cycles, and it has these seasonal cycles and daily cycles. And there's just certain times of the day where our body is going to do best doing certain things. So that's why we naturally, you know, go to sleep and we get up at certain times of the day. What's interesting, what's fascinating about chronobiology is that different biotypes have a different rhythm. So, for example, a, a people who are an endomorph, they need to be, they do better, they do best. I shouldn't say they need to, but they do best if they don't have to get up early because the rhythm of their body is, to be asleep in the later part of the morning. So like 5, 6, 7 a.m. is a good time for that for most of them to be sleeping. And yet some people have to get up at 5 a.m. even if they are an endomorph. And but it could throw off a lot of other things in their health. So just getting up at the wrong time of day could affect how much energy you have during the day, which affects maybe how much you exercise, which might affect how you communicate with the people at work and that might affect how much time you have you how well you feel with your family at the end of the day and all these things can be thrown off just by getting up the wrong time of day another thing is what time of day people should eat different biotypes should eat at different times of the day because some of them like a, a mesomorph should be eating earlier in the day as soon as they get up you know their body wants to break down food all the time and so they have a high amount of acidic acid in their stomach and they're going to want to get up and eat they shouldn't wait two or three hours before after they get up to have breakfast and skipping breakfast is a very bad idea for a mesomorph but an endomorph could get up and then wait a few hours wait two or three hours before breakfast without it negatively affecting their body so there's lots of different rhythms that we all you know participate in be, through the cycle of the planet but it isn't the same rhythm for all people and so some people do best do bit good staying up late at night but other people don't so it's really important to follow your power hour in ph 360 we have a power hour that tells you what time of day your body is resetting its hormones and restructuring new cells, generating new cells, those kind of things. For the mesomorphs, that's going to be some kind of, during your power hour between noon and six, you're going to have one hour where it's really good for you to exercise. And an endomorph is going to need to be sleeping during their power, power hour. And then the ectomorphs are usually, their power hours usually in the evenings and they need to be active. I'm, excuse me, using their brain or doing some kind of um, mental activity. A lot of times it just kind of depends on where you fall on the pH 360 wheel. Any questions about that? <laughs> I don't see any questions yet. Uh, okay. So if you guys have any questions, start adding them to the chat box so that we can get to them when Diana's finished. Um, definitely start asking questions if you've got some. Yeah, th this is really great, Dee. You're doing a great job at, at really explaining it well to everybody. Okay, good. You know, so, sometimes tie it back into um, what I'd love to hear is like kind of like how does this make a difference for us too, you know, as you're talking along? Yes. Okay. So, for example, with chronobiology, if you're waking up at the right time of day and going to bed at the right time of day, it's going to, you know, see this lady right here. She has, she's waking up feeling great. 
good energy, feeling well. But if you are going to bed at the wrong time of day or getting up at the wrong time of day, it could make you sluggish all day long. Or let's say you're not eating at the right time. You're skipping meals or eating too frequently because some biotypes actually shouldn't eat six meals a day. So, you, you know, they need time in between meals to digest. There's a rhythm for each body, and once you kind of figure out that rhythm, it can make such a big difference. Some people think everything is about what food they eat, and there's just that's why PH360, we're going through this today, so you understand there's so many areas that affect your health. It's not just food. It's not just exercise. It is, you know, your chronobiology. It is your phenotype. It is your... Um, um, your epigenetics, what it, what environment you're being exposed to. It's your, it's the geoscience, what area you're living in and how that affects your body. So we want to dial in for you specifically all these different areas of PH360 so you wake up feeling like this lady. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you wake up feeling great and energized, and that, that affects every part of your day to wake up feeling amazing, you know? but. Yeah. That's so true, Diana. Um, you know, Leslie had a great question, too, that kind of pertains to what you're talking about. She asked, do all people of a particular biotype have the same rhythm, and how much is environment and life, circumstancing, life circumstances affecting that rhythm? And I, I mentioned in the chat, I said there's 15 layers of science that the data goes through in order to come up with your specific recommendations, but can you elaborate a little bit for Leslie? Yes. So, Leslie, there's 360 different numbers you could have on this wheel, the, the PH360 wheel. So you could be a mesomorph, but there's um, 60 different point, you know, 60 different places you could be as a mesomorph. Actually, it's not just 60. There's 60. There's a there's 120 as a mesomorph because there's two categories within mesomorphs. And so it depends on where you fall on the 360 degree wheel. So that's why you're not all going to get every mesomorph is not going to get the same power hour. There's a range of 12 to 12 to 6 for the mesomorphs power hour. Mm -hmm. And so there's going to be. You're, you're not going to have the exact same as anybody else. And then once you might have the same power hour as another mesomorph with that same number as you, but then they might have different genetic backgrounds. So they're going to have, and maybe a different phenotype. So they're going to have other factors like they can't eat spinach or maybe they shouldn't eat coconut because of inflammation. So no two charts are ever, ever going to look the same because 10,000 data points are considered and every single body is different. Does that help answer that question, Jules? Is that? Yeah, it did. It totally did. Um, and um, the, uh, the there's so many factors involved in the profile that uh, there's so there's so many layers. Plus, there's so many data points. So it really is intricate. Um, this is just one level of the training that we felt like people could understand, and so that's why we're bringing it forward, letting you guys know about it. Plus, it's fun, you know, to talk about biotypes and that sort of thing. So yeah, um, it's fun. Yeah, so we, we enjoy doing it too. <laughs> um, but I wanted to ask one more question in relationship to what you just said is, uh, where do you find the power hour? Where is that? So uh, Joy wanted to know, where, to, where is the power hour? Okay, it's under your fitness section. So if you go to exercise or fitness, um, there'll be a box and it will say power hour. Yeah, and we'll be talking about that tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. Uh, with Rebecca Morrison. So we'll go over the power hour then. Okay, great. So let's get let's get forward onto genotypes and phenotypes. So the genotype is what your genetic makeup is, the the genes that you got from your parents, and your phenotype is the physical manifestation of what you inherited and your current environment. So you start out with your genotypes when you're born, and then as you are, um, and which which gives you a phenotype. But as you grow, you change and you have you know, your phenotype is affected by your environment. So this slide is to depict that we're all so different. We come from different areas of the world, different families, different backgrounds, different religions, different influences, 
and different cultures. So we're all so incredibly different. Now, how we get our, our genotype, we get this from our parents. And, you know, this, the blue and red lines represent them giving us genes. And that gives us our initial phenotype, but our phenotype is very pliable. Okay, here's another chart representing gene, how genes might happen. And then, so to get to, so to get to our phenotype, which your phenotype is your eye color, your hair color, your skin tone, skin color, the amount of wrinkles you have, whether you wear glasses or not, it's whether you have gray hair or not, um, how many freckles you might have, your moles. This is all your phenotype, okay? And we analyze your phenotype in the questionnaire. So in order to get your phenotype, the expression of your phenotype is a combination of a lot of different things. Of course, you know your age affects your phenotype, but also your environment, how much sun you've had, how much pollution, how much pollution you've been exposed to, um, how much or oppression you might have been exposed to or encouragement that's an environmental factor that'll affect the smile you wear on your face which is a phenotype quality right and so there's 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 your genome from your parents all of these different things are influencing how you look and what is amazing is your eye color can change over time your hair color can change your skin color and everything can change. And I remember when I was doing a lot of meditation a few years ago, I was doing meditating every day. And my mom told me, and my mom never ever exaggerates. She's just a straightforward kind of tell you, um, literally kind of person. And she said, "You look like you're getting younger." And meditating every day was actually making my skin look better. And I was I was actually starting to look younger just by meditating and having less stress in my life. So you're, you know, lots of things affect your phenotype. Okay, again, it's it's genes and envi plus environment. And then, um, you know, your diet will affect your phenotype, right? Um, genetic variations, so this could be, this is um, an environmental factor, affects your genes, affects your cells, and then they maybe mutate or you know, do things like that. Epigenetic modifications, thats that affects gene variation. Epigenetics, we're gonna go through that in just a minute, about all the things that are happening in your environment that actually change your cells. So then you've got your microbiome, which is in your gut, and that's what breaks down your food. And if you have a healthy microbiome, that will greatly affect your gene expression, your phenotype, and then your macro environment, um, which is, you know, the weather and the sun and toxins. Okay, so the environment and activities have an impact. So, you know, if you're working out a lot, like this gal right here, it's gonna affect your phenotype. It's gonna affect how you look. If you're not eating enough protein, it might affect your hair falling out, like this gal. You can over-exercise. Some people actually hurt their body by over-exercising. And what you eat and how you might meditate or or take care of yourself spiritually can all affect your your expression of your your phenotype. We ask a lot of questions about your phenotype because um, that tells us a lot about your health right now. Whether you have freckles, moles, and red hair, and all these different things tell us a lot about your body. Now, this picture is you know just expressing that what we eat definitely affects our phenotype. It affects how our body expresses itself. And this aging, this is just a picture showing a person as they age, very much affected by phenotype, affects their phenotype. Okay, now we're gonna talk, that rolls us right into epigenetics. So epigenetics really is what your genes are plus all of your environment now and we'll go through all of your environment in a second and that exp that equals your genetic expression or your phenotype and this is what epigenetics really is when it gets down to it it is how everything affects you your expression of your health so air pollution uh, water pollution 
pesticides, GMO foods, all of the ways that you could pollute your body affect your health and your phenotype expression. And soil contaminated where we, you know, animals that are um, you know, maybe killed and they're stressed when they're killed or whatever, you know, we could get, we could get into little tiny things, but everything that happens to you in your environment has an impact to some degree. And so it could be bacteria on the skin, exposure to bacteria in other countries, all kinds of things. All of those things are epigenetic factors in your overall health. Okay, so this is just another slide saying that all of that, the epigenetics affects you, who you are. Okay, in this slide, um, we've got all of the, a lot of the expression of the different things that can really affect your health. So let's start at the top, your diet. That can affect your gene expression. So the seasonal correction. So let's say you don't do well in the cold, like me. I don't do well in cold weather. So when it's cold, my hands get cold, my neck gets tight because I'm shivering and I'm holding myself clo you know, closed up. I stay in my house. I don't go out and see people as much. I'm really affected by the cold. And so your environment, your weather environment could affect you. Exposure to different diseases, so bacteria, toxins, drug abuse, financial status, and financial stress can affect you. How much you exercise, if you overexercise or underexercise, your microbiome, again, your gut, therapeutic drugs, alternative medicine, social interactions, and your mood, your psychological state. Those are just a few. There's actually a lot that aren't listed here. This is kind of just an overview of some of the major ones that affect your health. So when you look at that picture, I want you to think about that food is not always the focus. Okay, My health was improved by changing where I lived in, and going to a lower altitude. Going to a lower altitude improved my overall health, even my skin. So a diet is a factor. But you have to look at everything. And exercise is a factor, of course, but there's a lot of things that are influencing your overall health. <sighs> Sorry. Okay, now this is just another slide. This is what uh, that shows that. What PH360 is kind of focusing on are these areas. All right, so it's focusing on your food, your exercise, your career, which is where you spend a huge amount of your time, your sleep, your mind your outdoor environment and your indoor environment, and your social. These are the areas we focus on the most because they are some of the big ones that affect your health. We're going to add some things as the program expands and grows, like we're going to add about your relationships and your sex life. And there will be other areas that are added so that you can see that there's every little area can impact your overall health. Yeah, and the career section is uh, natural talents for those of you that aren't working or that are retired. It's just, you know, the things that are naturally beneficial for your body to be doing. Perfect. Yes, yes. Okay, so um, I just want to show a, a couple of slides about how the environment can impact your health. Like if you live in this kind of environment, you can see it's going to impact how you dress. And maybe, you know, how you talk to people and how much time you spend out time outdoors with your friends versus an environment like this where it's going to uh, totally affect it. You're going to wear something different. You might be more friendly and outgoing and sit on, the, sit on the beach for hours and enjoy the sun. So very different environments just by the temperature. Opportunity affects your genetic expression. So... These, girl, these kids are all wearing coats in class because it's cold in their classroom. Those kind of things will affect their opportunities. Privacy or lack thereof has an impact on your well-being. Freedom or oppression. And you can see the expression on these men's faces, how much they are impacted by their environment. And just think what their health is doing right now. <laughs> You know, so here's just a list of a few. The temperature of your home, humidity, where you live, where you work, what you eat, 
what drugs you take, who you surround yourself with, your thoughts, your actions, your posture, and how you exercise or if you exercise all impact you. Your family, huge, huge, huge influence. Some people's family influences their financial status, their thoughts or beliefs, their food, and their gene expressions. And if they want to change, sometimes it's hard because families have a big influence on us. And so um, I'm just going to skip forward because we're running low on time. Ident these are identical twins. Environments um, affected how their genes expressed themselves. They didn't live together. Here's identical twins. That genes expression really, epigenetics really affected them. So. Um, Damn those genomes. <laughs> I like this slide because really our environment has a big effect on us. <laughs> <laughs> a big effect on us. Okay, so um, I am ready to take questions if anybody has questions. And tomorrow yeah. we're going to talk about biotypology. Yeah, that's going to be it. Uh, that's going to be tomorrow at 1030. So um, we'll be doing that. And uh, that will be right after our 9 o'clock. So, uh, yeah, I've got a few questions here for you, Dee. Do you ready? Yes. Okay. Um, so uh, just coming back to what you were speaking about before, and people are wondering uh, if they're able to find when to eat and um, when to sleep in their profile right now. They want to know where is it. Okay. Well, it, we don't have that listed out specifically yet, but that is coming. It's a part of the program. One thing to know about PH360 is it is continually improving and growing with you. Uh, we're making the program stronger and stronger all the time with more and more detail. So eventually, you'll know, you know, you'll you'll know so much detail. It might be more than you want to know, <laughs> but that is coming. We know a little bit about what time you should be eating and sleeping, and we're adding those features in, and we're doing that very soon. Great. Wow, that's great. That's awesome. <laughs> I love it. Um, you know, Annette asked, she has a really good question because she said she noticed in her profile that between 4 and 5 is her power hour, and she said she has to get up at 4. So how, how does this work for her? Well, um, you know, we ha everybody has to work within their own limits of their job and their career and their family. And, you know, there's only so much a person can do. But if in a perfect world, if it were a perfect world and she could do whatever she wanted, she would not have that job. <laughs> she would or have it or have that job allow her to be flexible enough to sleep in during those uh, that time because there isn't another way to compensate for losing sleep when your body wants to be sleeping there isn't something I could say well take this pill or just exercise at this time and I'll make up the difference no the only thing if your body wants to be sleeping the only thing you can really be doing is sleeping so you know what what she could do as it's Annette right is that you said Annette yeah, Annette and that what you could do is maybe make a goal for some long-term way to maybe change the job or change um, the time that you have to be at that job and maybe set it as a goal because it will improve your overall health and energy to be able to sleep in at that time. And it can really affect things like weight for people. Sometimes people are eating really well and they're – exercising and they're doing everything and they're still gaining weight but it's because their body is trying to eat extra to have enough energy because they didn't get the sleep they needed or things like that mm -hmm. so that's about the only thing you can do is try to set a goal that will work and I know lots of people who aren't able to meet that power hour sleep and they it's a choice they, they just said oh it's okay I'm not I'm, you know that's one thing I'm not gonna be able to change just personal that's decision Thanks, Dee. Hey, can you check the click the uh, share screen again, and so we can see your face? <laughs> okay. um, the next question is um, the next. Well, there's multiple people who have asked um, how do they find out about their biotype or their body type, and so um, what do you have to say about that? Well, at the moment, all we have is we have coaches that can t tell them about their biotype. And that's all we have at this particular time. But um, 
let's see if I can figure out how to do this. It's it's in uh, the, it's in the hangout screen. Yeah, there you are. <laughs> we can see you now. Um, okay. So for right now, you have to talk to a coach, you know, have a coach, or attend one of our personal foundation courses. Those are the only ways we have at this current time. However, we're um, working on having that as a part of the program, and um, at least as a bonus or maybe part of everybody's program. So that's something that's still in the works. Until, until For now, it's just attending a course or getting a coach. And, and just as a side note, you guys, um, it's not necessarily necessary that you have the name of your biotype or know your number uh, for you to do PH360 at all. It's only an extra thing because all of the results of what that brings to your profile are in your profile. So you've already got yes. the results. It would just be knowing I'm this or I'm that. And so it, it's it's not necessary to do PH360. Just want to make sure that you guys understand that. Yeah. And okay. if you really want to know all about it, the best way is to come to a personal foundation course. It's a really awesome two-day course. Um, you get to meet other people in PH360, and you, it's not very expensive. In fact, early bird pricing is only 197 right now, so you know it's pretty cheap. So definitely check that out. But also. That's another important point, Jules, because in order, if we just told their biotype right now, it doesn't tell them enough information for it to be totally valuable. Like the personal foundation course goes through it in so much detail that they learn what it means to be that biotype and all the things that go with it. But if we just said, you know, this is your number, they're not going to go, what does that number mean? And where is that number on the wheel? And, you know, it's, it's hard to understand that. We have to figure out a way to put it in the program to convey it in a way that will even actually give people enough data to make it useful. Right. That's great. Yes. Um, let me get look at a couple more questions here. Um, let's see. Okay. We already talked about that. Great. Yep. Oh, I see a question. Somebody said, are we supposed to sleep during our power hour? And they'll just have to look that up under fitness and or see the webinar you're doing tomorrow because it's different for different biotypes. You have to look up what you're supposed to do in your power hour. I'm supposed to exercise during my power hour. Other people are supposed to sleep. It depends on your biotype and where you fall in the 360 wheel. Yeah, and I'm supposed to take supplements and I'm supposed to be active during that time. So everybody's different. Here's a question about chocolate. I love answering questions about chocolate. You do, don't you? <laughs> okay. So her question, I love this, Joy. Whoever Joy is, I love this. She says, I'm supposed to eat dark. I'm not supposed to eat dark chocolate, but it really makes me happy. How do I balance diet with happiness if both pieces are equally beneficial to my epigenetics? <laughs> okay. So I, I love questions about chocolate because it's, it's my – favorite food <laughs> in the world. Um, so let me tell you two things about chocolate. One is, one reason I'm not supposed to have too much chocolate, and it might be the same for Joy, I don't know, is my biotype is naturally high in serotonin, okay? And serotonin is this hormone that makes us um, positive and makes us um, see the glasses half, half full, you know, and it, has, it makes you feel good. It's a feel-good hormone. When you eat chocolate, it interferes with the natural levels of serotonin. So it actually changes what's happening in your body naturally with serotonin. And then that can drop your mood after a while. So first of all, chocolate's going to raise your mood like serotonin does. But then it can affect how much serotonin you have, and then it can drop your mood. So that's one reason is it could be interfering with your natural hormones. Another important reason that we limit chocolate in on P360 is because of the things it's combined with. Because if you get a chocolate bar, most of the time, your chocolate bar has ingredients in it we don't want you to be eating. Like sugar. Um, <laughs> well, the sugar and the oils, it's really a combination of not just the sugar, the sugar is bad too, but the oils that are in there, the way that the, the certain oils with chocolate cause a lot of inflammation. So here's how I've got around that, <laughs> because I still eat chocolate. 
<laughs> is that I eat it with the I eat it with avocado. I, I make a chocolate mousse with chocolate and avocado and a little maple syrup. And so I limit my sugar, but I'm not having those processed oils with the chocolate bar and or I'll put it in with banana frozen banana and make a banana ice cream with chocolate because I'm not getting any oils so the oil and the chocolate certain combinations of that are highly inflammatory so there's lots of different reasons why we limit things and I'm just giving you two for chocolate there's a lot of different ones same with coffee coffee has many 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 different reasons why it may be on yours or may not be on yours uh, on your pH 360 list because there's just so many different components that are considered with coffee your hormones Your type of brain that you have, you know how sensitivity how sensitive your nervous system is on and on and on and on all these things So many different things are considered with each and every food. I hope that helps joy <laughs> And rock a cow's coming by the way in our food list. It will be there soon <laughs> Yeah, and rock a cow. That that's what I do ingredient yeah, I do raw cacao with avocado or bananas and um, don't do the oils. Sometimes I'll do raw cacao with a little coconut oil and make a little, my own little crunchy bar in the freezer. Okay. What other questions? Well, we only have three minutes left, so <laughs> I don't see any other questions that I missed, I think. I mean, I think I got all the questions. If, uh, if I miss one, can you guys throw it back up there so I can see it? It takes two minutes, of course, for them to hear it. Let's see. Um, yeah, so uh, does your body naturally know what it needs? And if you listen to it, the foods that aren't good for you should naturally be a turnoff. Well, I, you know, that's very true when a person's in balance and your body's balanced already. So you already have a good work environment, home environment, um, mental attitude, you know, then you're naturally gonna know what's good for you. And we run into a lot of people with PH360 who said, oh, I'm already doing that, I'm already doing this part, I'm already doing that part. That's great, and once you get to know your body. It seems like as we age, we know more and more about what our body wants and doesn't want, intuitively. But other people get out of balance, and maybe work has stressed them out, or um, a family situation or a health concern of a family member and then they're they're out of balance and they might eat the wrong foods because their hormones get messed up so we hopefully will be intuitive and pick the things that are naturally good for us but sometimes if we're not if we're not in balance then we need pH360 to help us with that well and and that's what keeps you in balance too as you move forward in life because pH360 is not a you know, like we just bought it and that's it sort of thing, or I did it once. It's a it's a life it's a lifestyle, basically. And you will go through your whole life and it'll keep you well, basically. So yeah. Okay, okay and Joy says she wants to know how she finds out if she's a serotonin person. See the program's gonna know. Um and uh, and without a coach, I don't know. Um a coach or a course, they're all schools, we, right? <laughs> yeah, Jules, why don't we pick a few people um, from the list who can have like a free um, one hour coaching session with one of our coaches? Pick one or two people, pick a couple people. Cool. Okay, wait, I have that. another idea. I have an idea on what we can do with this group. Um, so anybody on this call right now, if you post the discovery series or um, you know the if you post the discovery series on um, your Facebook, then you, we'll send you your biotype. How's that sound? Oh, okay. Look it up and send it to them. That's yeah. a good idea. Yeah, um, I mean, it won't tell you anything yet. You'll still have to come to a course or get a coach to learn more about it. Um, but you can also purchase the recordings of the live stream of of the LA course if you wanted to. Um, we have Brisbane coming. I mean, we have all kinds of courses coming up. We teach around the world. So we teach in Australia, we teach in Europe, and we teach in the United States um, currently. And so there's definitely a place for you to come and come to a course. And if you can't come to a course, we have live stream. Just go to the courses, Coach. I, I posted it in the feed. If you search back through the feed, look for light blue, and you'll see that I posted the link to the courses. And it's in your profile also. So Okay. And I have a couple things real quick, Jules, because Rosie asked if she can have a personal coach. She, Rosie, email me. If you want a personalized coach, email me or go to 
um, ph360.me forward slash personal dash coaching dot, you know, whatever personal that is. Personal dash health dot. That's coaching. right. I have that link. <laughs> I can share that link or we can share that link. But a lot of these questions are going down so fast we can't see them. Um, so if you would like a free coaching session or, um, you know, some of that, I can only do so many uh, with our coaches, but email me or um, you can sign up for coaching. We'll give you that link. Jules, do you want me to give them that link right now? Uh, well, first of all, here's uh, Diana at ph360.me. And then here is the um, number, uh, the coaching. I'll put that up, yeah. And I can only do a few on the free coaching right now because I only have a few coaches. But... Um, but we could do a few of those. And then you can also buy coaching if you want four free four sessions. It's $147 to get four sessions plus some emails. And they, they're very detailed, the coaching. And coaching is in your resources. All you have to do is click on resources in your profile. And in the resource section, in the low, uh, on the left-hand side, you'll see coaching. And you can just click there, and that takes you directly to where you can hire a coach. Okay? Okay. That's easy fun. Okay. So D, it's okay. time. I'm sorry. We're like a couple minutes past the time. Okay. Diana, I just want to say thank you so much for being here. Oh my gosh, this was amazing. And you're coming back for tomorrow, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. so we'll be back tomorrow. We'll get to answer more of your questions. So don't worry if your question didn't get answered. Thank you so much for spending your Saturday with us. And it's been so much fun. And if you love this course, please tell us on the Facebook page or share it on your Facebook and just share with people so that they can learn about the gift of personalized health because that's why we're all here. We're all here to spread that message. And so, um, you know, please let us know if this has been valuable to you um, because that'll guide us in what we produce for you in the future. And, um, you know, we want to make sure that we're giving you something you like. So make sure you tell us on Facebook. Uh, and get some of those other people that didn't show up for the course to come to the course tomorrow if they, you know, on Facebook. So that'd be great. All right. Um, it was great to see everybody. Diana, thank you again. And we just love you guys from the bottom of our hearts. You're, um, you know, you're what makes us sing here. So, <laughs> see you later.